Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Veos and welcome to another episode. I uh, didn't really have, didn't really feel like Fallout today, but um, actually I, my, all day long as I was working on the heavy equipment, I couldn't get out of my head uh, the, the career mode for Kerbal Space Program that we're doing. And what I couldn't get out of my head was the whole life support issue. How is it going to work? Uh, can I keep it stock? Will I have to download a mod eventually? And I remember reading a lot of your comments, and if suddenly it started to hit me, eventually this whole this whole thing that we're doing is not going to be just one rocket going to the going to Duna, coming back. You know, it's not going to be little small little missions. After a while, after a while, it's going to be fleets and space stations and uh, trading ships that are going to trade fuel and ore. And you're going to have um, pirates, and you're going to have renegades, and rebellions, and you're going to have all this other good stuff. Colonies and whatnot. How am I going to keep track of all the life support needed for all of those colonies? We're talking, uh, I'm talking big numbers here. Um, they're Obviously, we're, due to part count, we're not going to be able to, to have them together. But there'll be like 20 or 30 vessels within orbit. You know, that will be considered a fleet, or what, whatever the case may be, even though they're far away from each other. Um, due to park count, you know, once, once they come into, uh, what, what was it, uh, three kilometers away or something like that, uh, suddenly the load, the parts, the parts start loading up and your, your game starts having lag issues. So I was thinking, okay, I would like to do a type of life support thing, but when it starts getting outrageous, to the, to the point where I can't keep track of every single Kerbal that's out there because solar nations, that's what we're doing, solar nations. We're going to be literally simulating the rise of nations. So, But here is my thoughts and I'd like to hear your comments below on these different types of game rules I'm going to put out there. I want to keep it simple and I want to keep it easy. For the time being, we're going to simulate life support being that one of these capsules can uh, contain enough oxygen, food, and water, or snacks, whatever you want to say, for about 24 hours. So if I was to take one of these guys and flip it around, put another one on there, then we, have, uh, we essentially have one Kerbal that could live for two days. And if there was two Kerbals, that's twice the amount of resources being used. So if it's two Kerbals and two capsules, then it's obviously back down to one day. Simple math, simple math. Now that's for the beginning of the rise of nation. When we start getting to the point where we have ships involved, you know, literal ships that dock at space stations, they don't land anywhere, they dock at space stations, military ships, uh, cargo vessels, trading ships. When we start getting into that type of era of the, of the Kerbal race, if there is a space station in orbit around Kerbin, preferably um, preferably a supply station, then any ships around that planet, then we can go ahead and say, well, those vessels that are around that planet or moon that has that supply station will be set. They'll be good. This way, I don't have to worry about <laughs> switching out life support from 50 different ships that are around, you know, a space uh, r around a planet or moon. I can just go ahead and say, well, that moon has a supply ship or a supply depot or something of that nature. That means those ships are taken care of. So in the background, there's shuttle missions, there's, you know, resupplying uh, missions and stuff like that in the background. Now we have to make it real, meaning we're not going to build a gigantic spaceship and have one freaking capsule there where the poor Kerbal has been stuck in there for 50 freaking years. I'm not going to do that. If we're going to build a we're if we're going to build a ship, right? We're going to give it some some meat on its bones. We're going to give it some living quarters, some living space. And uh, we can go ahead and make rules up for that as well. I don't know, for one Kerbal, uh, he needs at least, you know, one something. I I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. So let me know about that and uh, let me know what you guys think about this idea in the comments below. Uh, for building and stuff, I like the I like the whole mining concept where we use stock parts. We go ahead, we mine, uh, we build up ore, and then we go ahead, turn that ore or smelt the ore into fuel. And however, 
much cost like this ship right here. How much this ship costs 21,223. Let's use this number to build the ship. Um, for instance, we get uh, we get a bunch of ore. We smelt the ore into 21,223 units of fuel. So we'll go ahead, we'll burn up all that fuel, and that will be the equivalent of producing all uh, 200 or whatever parts that this ship needs in order to become a ship. Then we'll take the ship, we will hyper edit it over there, and of course, yay, they made it, you know, that kind of thing. If the planet has a space station around it or a, a colony capable of supplying spaceships that are in orbit, then any spaceship that's in orbit around that planet will be fine. No matter how, how much time passes, they'll be fine. That way it can, you know, like I said before, be a lot easier on me when I, have, when I start making a whole lot of, you know, military spacecraft and uh, all that other jazz. But it's going to be fun no matter what. No matter what, it's going to be fun. So for now, so we can continue on with the actual Solar Nations project, we'll do the whole capsule is about uh, 24 hours worth of life support. So when we go to the moon, we'll put maybe two or three of them together, however long it takes. And of course, if we don't get the poor Kerbal back by that time frame, then yeah, they'll die. I was looking online and it hit me that the stupidity and the courage of Kerbals actually add up to something. A lot of people are saying that it adds up to how much science data you can receive. So if some, if a scientist is real dumb, the science data that you're going to get from the Science Junior and Goo containers aren't going to be as good as a scientist with low stupidity. I'm hoping that's not true because I just went ahead and just got a whole bunch of people and I have no idea what their stats are so if that kind of hurt me on the science wise I don't know I might I might um, I might think about going back to those areas with a smarter Kerbal to get whatever remaining science is left but um, I don't know if that I don't, you know a lot a lot of people say well it doesn't do anything it just changes their faces in the little IVA that's on the bottom or bottom right and a lot of people are saying no no it actually does something when you're trying to make science or trying to repair something or pilot a ship or whatever so I'm a little confused on that but we'll find out if anybody knows please leave a comment below on what uh, on what all that mumbo jumbo is so we need to go ahead and get mountain data well this is obviously way way too much uh, umph to get to the mountains. Three, two, one. Alright, we're headed towards the mountains. Matter of fact, I'm going to bring it down. Bring the throttle down just a bit. I think we might. Alright. Whoa! Obviously, we're going to need fins on that thing. Come on. There we go. There we go. Now we're cooking with gasoline. No, no. No, no. There you go. Whoa! <laughs> we just have to get to the freaking mountains. That's all we need. Come on, you got half a fuel tank left. I don't think we're going to make it. Ah. All right. Detach. There it goes. Uh, yeah, I'll take it. All right, so we have the X-8B. It's a little longer first stage with no second stage other than the capsule itself. Here we go. Trying to avoid these high places. Last thing I need for her to do is land on one of those damn cliff sides. All right, we're going to go ahead and eject. Whoa. <laughs> Easy now. I'm going to deploy makeshift air brakes. That'll slow us down a little bit more. Does it? Really? Let me see. That one, yeah. See how, how our speed is 269? As soon as we put out those makeshift air brakes, it starts slowing down significantly. Turn this around. There we go. Uh. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful. All right, let's check this out. What do we got? Um, what? Highlands? Highlands? 
the what? Oh, are you serious? The one spot that's not considered a mountain we landed on. It's like right there. It's right there. Mountains is like right here and oh jeez. Go ahead to couple. Whoa. Come on. Come on, makeshift air brakes. Slow me down. Slow me down. Come on, where's the parachute? The parachute say yes. Yes. Okay. Flying over Kerbin. What about crew data? That they'll tell us. Ah, Highlands again. Oh well, might as well take it since it's new data. Son of a biscuit. I think I'll just I think I'll just aim for it this time. Just aim right at it. Uh, I think I goofed. Oh crap. Ah, nose is going down. Ah, she's going down. She's going down. She's going down. Alright, judgment call. Judgment call. Eject. Eject. Come on. Unsafe. 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 I know. I know. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Okay. Okay. Alright. I know. I know. I know, girl. I know. Uh, I'm gonna try to save your life. I have no idea. This is not gonna work, is it? I should have ejected. I should have ejected, hit the RCS, and flipped her around so that the impact would have been on her helmet. Nine times out of ten, that usually saves the Kerbal. But I panicked. Fuck. So, in my attempt to try to gather easy science, I got impatient, and a Kerbal lost her life. So, to try to keep that from happening again, we are going to go ahead... I don't know. Well, no, because... The parach there's no parachutes on the actual capsule, so it was what it was. It was attached onto the actual science science module. Having him like this, unfortunately, ejected the Kerbal violently out of the capsule. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these, bring them outwards away from the capsule, clip them in just a teensy bit. There we go. That way, if something like that happens again, even if it rips off one parachute, there'll still be another one. The reason why it was such a catastrophic failure was because of the fact that the Science Junior capsule was completely destroyed and unfortunately all the parachutes were on that capsule. So even though the command pod survived, it didn't have a parachute to save its life. So this this should make it a whole lot more safer. Here we go. Eject. Okay, we have control. We still have control. Alright, I'm gonna flip around. Flip around. Ah, darn. Not the cliff. Not the cliff. Anywhere but the frickin' cliff. No place else. Alright, eject. Air brakes. Does it say safe? Is it safe? Unsafe. Risky. Safe. Going. Go, go, go. Man. I sure hope those deploy. Son of a... Secondary parachutes. Easy, 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 easy. Don't, 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 don't. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, oh, I knew it was going to do that. I knew it. Okay, don't worry. Don't worry. We can bring this up. We can roll. And then bring them back up. <laughs> oh, man. All right, awesome. Let's go ahead and get some data. Yes, 0 0.9, 0 0.2, lots of science. We're looking for 45. Man, we need to get 45. Oh, crap, we need to get 45. Mm-mm-mm, 45. I'm thinking maybe I screwed up with the, with getting the survivability. Because we're almost out of biomes. Maybe, we, oh, well, actually, no. We still have high orbit and a couple others. Like flying over different biomes. Uh, all right. Come on. Ah. Holy shit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, easy now with the red. Actually, I guess I could look at right the, the color, the color marking, huh? It says unsafe and they're red. Oh, yep. Look, see, safe green and then safe gray. Okay, that's what that means. Well, I don't have to click on them anymore. That's nice. Parachute. Boom. Nice. Beautiful. I love it. 0.8 science. Awesome. And all the goo science we can possibly get. EVA. 2.9 point. Nice. 
so help me if you knock that thing over. Holy crap. 2.6 science? For the desert? That's a lot of science. Oh, never mind. Launch pad data from the material study. 0.8 science. Okay, well. Um, anything else? Uh, 0.3 science. Okay, well, damn. <laughs> Uh, I guess we're gonna have to take. Uh, we're gonna have to build a smaller vehicle now, and re revisit everything that's in here from when we first started. Do you guys remember that? Oh, geez, that's gonna be forever. <sighs> but that's sadly going to have to be for another day. I'm all out of time, ladies and gentlemen. So I might do this again tomorrow. We'll see. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much, so so very much for your support on patreon it, it every dollar counts it really does i'm also thinking about monetizing my videos let me know what you think about that in the comments below and thank you again for watching i am veos human signing off and have a good night